What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365 Geek, and today we are talking about Microsoft Flow and we are talking about the HTTP action in Microsoft Flow. So, what is the HTTP action? The HTTP action allows you to um, do a, a HTTP action as in like a, um, a post or a put or a get from an endpoint and then um, trigger something off of that. So you can um, get some information from an API or you could post some information to an API, for instance. So let's take a look at that and I'll kind of go through this a bit more in depth. So at the moment, I've got uh, a flow that I've pre-configured and pre-set up. But if you want to add a HTTP step in, it's very simple. You just go to new step, built in, HTTP, and then you have three options here. So we're looking at this first one, HTTP action. And that's what I've done up here at the top. So I've got a manual trigger, and then we've got this HTTP action. Now, the first thing you are asked for is a method. So the method is what it is you're trying to do. So think about it in terms of like create, update, um, you know, uh, read and delete. So the CRUD methodology. HTTP uh, has its own method methods that you can use. So here they are. There are get, put, post, patch, and delete. Some of these are kind of self-explanatory and some of them kind of need a little bit more detail. So a get is essentially a request. So this is what we are going off to this place and we are getting information back from it. A put is where we are actually sending information to that endpoint to then create something on that side or, or do an action on that side. A post is where we're actually replacing something that already exists. So if you have uh, an action up there or a record at the top, we're actually just going to replace that completely with a post. A patch is where we are changing a bit of data for something that already exists. So slightly different from a post, where a post would be replacing the whole thing that already exists, a patch is manipulating or changing a piece of data there that already exists. And put is like creating that new thing. And delete is delete, so we're going off and we're deleting that. So in my example here, I've got a get. Um, so what next it asks for is a URI. So for this, I am looking at a cat API. Yes, I have a cat, she's brilliant. And obviously I thought a cat API would be a good thing to show you. So we have uh, this uh, this URL here for this API that I'm going to be sending, uh, or going to be like, connecting to. Next thing it's asking me for is headers. So headers are a way to sort of like pre-validate data that you're um, sending. So if you send something with the incorrect headers, your endpoint is just going to ignore it. So in this instance, I've had to request an API key. It was free. I just signed up and they sent it to me in an email. Um, don't steal this. Uh, you can do, but you know, what's the point? It's free. You can go to your own. So I am sending this x-api-key, which is in the format that they want, and then the value I'm sending is this. Um, this is my API that I've got. Now you can have other headers in here if your API uh, requires that sort of thing. Underneath headers, we have queries. So queries similar to headers are things that we can send to the API to then um, specify a, a specific thing. So we are querying on that side to get a specific piece of information back. So in my instance, I could put a, a query in as being, um, you know, breed of cat. And then the query is like a Bengal cat or a, you know, a, you know, a short haired cat, something like that. Uh, and that allows me to get the information back that I need instead of like getting everything back. So we're gonna send a request to just get an image of like a Bengal cat and then send that back. And away we go, all good. <coughs> now, the body is a bit more complicated. So the body allows you to handle multi-part slash form data, which would be a request that you would send um, send through. Uh, I'm not gonna cover that in this detail, in, in, in detail in this video, but that allows you to do sort of that sort of side of uh, your HTTP requests. The advanced options, we also have uh, an option for a cookie. 
and we also have options for authentication. So you have a couple of different authentication models down here. But in this instance, my API is an open API. All it requires is the API key for me to get through. Now, later on, after this bit, I'm going to parse the JSON that I am getting back from, uh, from this HTTP request. So I've loaded in a sample payload. We covered this in a previous video. You can go check that out. Um, and I'm getting some information back. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload an image. So this API that I'm using, uh, where it says v1 for slash images for slash search, this is actually saying uh, sem, like I'm, I'm looking for an image of a cat to come back. And in the JSON that it sends back, there is a, a URL that I am looking for. So uh, the parser JSON, um, I, I go to upload a URL and it automatically put this apply to each around each of the um, uh, around each of the requests here. And again, we've covered that in a previous video. Flow's done that automatically for me, and the thing that I'm looking for is a source URL. So uh, the source URL, I'm using the upload file from URL um, option in OneDrive for business. Uh, the source URL I'm putting in there from the JSON. The destination path here, and if I allow overwrite, yes or no. So let's test that. We'll hit save. I'll perform the action. Run flow. Done. As you can see, it's running through. This is taking a little bit of time to complete, and there it goes. So uh, we've sent the HTTP request. We've sent the API key, and that's returned. Uh, and that's that's sent here. Uh, and then we can parse the JSON that we've actually gotten back from the uh, from the. API endpoint. So that's given us this uh, this image here. And then later on, I've taken that image, I've uploaded that to my OneDrive for Business. Uh, this is the image, this is the name of it, and we put it in there. So if I swap over to my OneDrive for Business, we can see that there is a cat's picture here, cats.jpg. Created a few seconds ago. If I open that up, there's a picture of a cat swimming and it's got a stick. Now isn't that something you want to see every day? So I might configure this Microsoft Flow to go off and send me a picture of a cat every day. I could send it to, um, I could configure it to post Twitter every day and show my Twitter followers that I like cats and here's a random picture of a cat every day. It's brilliant, but these things can be used for anything. So the HTTP action allows you to do various things with things like APIs to then go and do various actions. So it's a really powerful tool in Microsoft Flow and me as a non-developer, that's easy enough for me to understand. You know, I know what it is an API is expecting. I can go off and do it. I'm delivered something back and then I can work with that. What do you guys think? Are you going to be getting cat pictures from the uh, cat API now? I know I will be. L let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, please like and please share it with your friends. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Ciao for now.